On today's Locked on Bama, not only are we going to talk about Bama, I'm going to tell you why this is the greatest week of the year. You are Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked on Bama, HSA's radio network. Luke Robinson, that's me, and Bama Online's Jimmy Stein, that's him. Thank you, everydayers, and thank you, newbies, and thank all of you. Anybody watching, even by accident, we love you so much. And also want to thank FanDuel for being the sponsor of today's program. Jimmy, we're going to talk about Kalen DeBoer's press conference today. We're going to talk about recruiting visit news, and there is at least one huge visitor for not this weekend, but it's for a big time. And we're also going to talk about some Western Kentucky players to watch that aren't named TJ Finley because everybody's sort of watching him. But I am going to tell everybody really quickly why this is the greatest week of the year. And really, it's the greatest two weeks of the year. Think about this, people. I just I want to share my joy. OK, so this week is game week. Right. We already had a game and, and it was awesome. But, you know, that was just sort of like a mini appetizer. Right. So Thursday night, we get actual games. I have my fantasy football draft Thursday night, too, by the way. And then Friday night, um, I get to do the high school scoreboard show where all, you know, it's week two and everybody's sort of beginning to settle in a little bit. Things are a little bit more normal in high school. And then Saturday, you got all the big games. I'm going to be driving to the beach, getting to listen to some of them on the radio. And then I get to watch Bama that night. And then Sunday, you got another game. Monday, you got another game. And the thing is, we're off Monday, so really it's a short week. And then Thursday, you got the real NFL coming around. I mean, does it get any better? I mean, this is—it's like just just a week and a half of pure awesome. That's all it is to me. So I just had to say that. Um, I know I'm supposed to start off with Alabama stuff. That's what they instruct us. But I'm just a dead gum giddy right now. I didn't have a choice. It's the um, collision of uh, Christmas and July Fourth. I'll leave Thanksgiving out of it because I know you hate Thanksgiving. But uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Christmas in July Fourth, like all rolled into one. Heck, let's throw in Easter. I might like Thanksgiving this year because I might go see Alabama play in that Las Vegas tournament. Ooh, happy you know Thanksgiving. I'm, that is like one. The only thing I'm looking forward to getting old about is my kids get old enough to where they may not want to come home for Thanksgiving, and I can go do something I want to do. That's not going to be super crowded. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most horrible thing I think I said as a family person. Um, okay. So, Jimmy, let's talk a little bit about Kalen DeBoer's press conference yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's pretty run of the mill. Uh, it, it, I mean, he didn't say a lot, but he, he did. It was funny. One of the things he said, somebody asked him, do you have jitters? And he was like, well, I wouldn't say I have jitters, but I have butterflies. And I was thinking, I bet you he's not 100% sure what jitters are. That may be a Southern thing. It could thing. be a Southern. Yeah, I don't know if they have jitters. They might not have jitters in South Dakota. Yeah, no, that's, they, he's like. I'm a little surprised here. They have butterflies. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's true. But uh, jitters, jitters, it's too cold for uh, too cold for jitters. I, you know, the thing that stands out to me is not necessarily something he said, Luke. To me, it's like the fact that Nick Saban's press conferences were like news. How what percentage of Nick Saban press conferences ended up on Sports Center? <laughs> because he said something. The whole national media is watching Saban's press conferences because something big could happen. I, I I bet we go this entire season and never see DeBoer's press conference quotes on Sports Center all year. Yeah, and that's okay. That's okay. It's not a criticism. It's that's normal. Like, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> that's how college football works. So it's not necessarily newsworthy, and that's fine. Um, I thought the injury report was interesting in the sense he admitted, you know, Jan Miller and Jane Roberts have have missed significant practice time. That may affect how they play in the game. And Saban approached things a little differently. Saban would not start players who had missed a lot of practice. He would instead start the guy that's practiced the most. Uh, I get the feeling DeBoer may not not be that way, although I I still guess Justice Sane is going to be out there for the first snaps at running back. But – uh. He did say Jaden and Jam, uh, you know, were likely to play, even though they've missed a lot of time. And that Jeremiah Alexander, though, is unlikely to play. He is a – I think he's got a shoulder injury, uh, and he has missed significant time. What's really interesting about that to me, and since, Luke, this is a game 
where we're very likely to play the twos and the threes are, are going to actually get some playing time here. When uh, the starters at inside linebacker, of course, will be Deontay Lawson and Jihad Campbell. But with Jeremiah Alexander out, he's a two alongside Justin Jefferson. But with him out, that means a freshman's going to pop up and be a second team inside linebacker. I'm guessing that's Justin Okoronkwo, don't you think? So we could see Okoronkwo not just play. I would go so far as to say significant playing time, which is great for his development. And as we know, he can play it up to four games and still redshirt. If that, you know, so that, that just because he plays a lot Saturday doesn't mean that he won't redshirt, but, uh, I, it'll be great. I, I hope we get a lot of, uh, of Okoronkwo on, on Saturday. That'd be something to look forward to. Uh, I'm super fired up about seeing him just running around, even if he's out of place, even if he doesn't go in the right spot. I just want to. That's what you want to see? Yeah, that is. I mean, th- that you just want to see the athleticism. Right. That's all we heard about. And what's so funny, if he what a, wasn't What a from poor Germany, run fit. What a poor run fit. That was fantastic. <laughs> If he wasn't from Germany, like let's say he was from Thompson, we'd be like, man, this guy's got a long way to go. But because we know he has a long way to go in advance, we're sort of excited to see just how athletic he is because that's all people have talked about. And how hilarious is this? Here's a nice rant. And (laughs) this doesn't apply to every player. But how about the fact that Okoronkwo, we get him from Germany, and the conventional wisdom is, oh, He's got to learn American football. He didn't even play a lot of American football. Not a, he didn't play high school football. He's from a, he doesn't speak the language. It's gonna. He's a project. It's gonna take a long time. Here he is, probably a second team player in his first game that he dresses out for in America, and is probably gonna play substantial snaps in the game. And he's the he's the guy that was like everybody's like, oh, it's gonna take him a long time. We have to remember, folks, that. Yes, football is not easy. Football is not baseball in terms of the rules of the game. And it is complex, but it's also not rocket science. You know, they, they figured out. I remember people used to say the same thing about Bray Hubbard when he switched from quarterback in high school to playing DB, which is kind of weird because nobody says it about Jalen Abakwe, who, by the way, was also a quarterback in high school, just like Bray Hubbard. It's funny how people point that out. And, and But the point, Bray Hubbard also played as a freshman, played quickly. Uh, it's not rocket science they don't have to go out there and solve you know physics problems you know while, while getting hit in the mouth uh they pick up on it but most of these kids pick up on it quick and most of them get it can get out there quicker than people think boy i I'm, i say this in a completely regurgitating fashion of quoting okay. shane gillis um you know the comedian you know who i'm talking about I do know who you're talking about, but I don't think I was aware of him until a couple months ago. And now yeah, he was on yeah. SNL. He got in some trouble. He's but he uh, he's and, but he's he's pretty controversial. He he had a wow. the reason I bring him up is yesterday he had a funny. I mean, I was driving from back from Raleigh. He had a funny take on on some football stuff because he played some football, I think, uh, in maybe in college like small ball. And um, he uh, he said, you know, he, he's talking about white defensive backs for some reason. When you talked about Bray Hubbard, it made me think that. He goes, he goes, you just don't see any more white defensive backs. He said, I think there are only two of them left that they're at the San Diego Zoo and they can't get them to breed. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Right. I mean, it just made me think that, I mean, part of that is why. Funny, I mean, but it's technically huh? wrong. I actually read this year. It is very right. technically wrong. It's <laughs> still funny. It is funny. It's funny. It's, yeah. funny. it's wrong and funny. Now, there's, yeah. there's quite a few white DBs, even in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And and shoot, let me tell you something. You want to talk about good defense, go to Iowa. Now, offensively, it is, you know, like watching static on your television, but um, defensively. Anyway. Man, if you want to make a, hey, if you want to make a name for yourself or, or, or become a famous assistant coach, be an offensive coordinator in Iowa right now. <laughs> I mean, if, if you go to Iowa and you're the OC and you light it up, People are right. going to think you invented football. Don't, for, don't say light it up. If you score seven points <laughs> over a two-game span. Uh, anyway, all right. So regardless, you know, DeBoer's press conferences, let, let me go ahead and yeah. warn everybody. They're not going to be as much fun as Saban's. But, or not, as, not as entertaining or weird as Lane's. But I don't care. I'm fine with that. I could use a little break from having to – Check up on the press conferences all the time. There'll be a lot of positivity because he's that that kind of guy. Positivity, 
great comments about the players, which is what he's all about. Uh, but hey, we haven't seen him quote defend himself after a game. <laughs> uh, it'll be more interesting, you know, next Monday, I think. And oh, and one thing we should throw in though, uh, in the segment though, is not only did DeBoer's spoke, Nick, Nick Sheridan, the offense coordinator, Kane Womack, defense coordinator, also had press conferences. Drastic difference from the Saban era where we did not see coordinators until the bowl game or, yeah. or the SEC championship game when the SEC is like, you have to make your coaches available uh, for the press. Uh, but it was nice hearing from the coordinators who also have a lot to say about their players. And believe it or not, I believe on Wednesday uh, there will be assistant coaches made available, just regular. The only regular other time, assistants. the only other time we saw him was when Saban was yelling at him on the sideline in game. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys about Five Hour Energy, and I thought I had the overlay, and I can't find it. So I'm hoping I have it. And somebody said, well, the right, five hour, this is Five Hour Energy. energy going, where's my overlay? Where's my overlay? <laughs> I'm we going to sent find you an overlay. overlay. <laughs> I'm going to find the overlay while I'm talking about Five Hour Energy, and I'll put it up there later. But regardless, Five Hour Energy is the best. I love it. I use it all the time. I really do. I mean, I don't use it like literally all the time. I'm going to use it today. You know why? Because I got up at three o'clock this morning for some dumb reason and I've got to work all day and then I got to do a show tonight and I got to be ready to rock. Five Hour Energy helps you do that. Look, if you're tired after lunch, you're not alone. Everybody is. I am. In fact, research shows that more than 70% of us hit the wall after lunch. Let Five Hour Energy a five hour energy shot help you leap over that wall instead of crashing into it. Five hour energy fixes tired fast. Whether you have a long list to do for work or if you've got DIY projects or whatever, five hour energy shots give you the feeling of alertness and the energy you need to get in the zone. And I use it all the time. I absolutely love five hour energy. Go to fivehourenergy.com. You will love it. Use promo code locked on CFB to receive 20% off your order. And go ahead and load up because I'm telling you, this college football season, you're going to want to stay up and you're going to need that five hour energy. There's no doubt about it. I've never seen anything like the way people call me while I'm in the middle of talking on this thing. I, it's just that, was, and it's all my family members, and it's nothing. It's just usually like, well, what's going on? Yeah, anyway, <laughs> um, I'm doing something, man. I'm trying to. Put you kids through college. Um, all right. Western Kentucky players to watch. Yeah. 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 Um, I did a little piece on BOL about their top 10 players. And I was kind of like, you know, when you really dive into, okay, who are these dudes? And, and you find out some interesting things. Their roster is filled with, uh, with a lot of SEC transfers, some of whom I didn't even list as, as their very best players. But they have several SEC transfers throughout their roster. Uh, one interesting guy, I bought, this is all news to me, but a dude from Birmingham actually played at Ramsey, uh, and he signed with Alabama State and played wide receiver. He led the entire SWAC in receiving last year. This guy's got monster numbers that he put up at Alabama State over three years. He transferred portaled to Western Kentucky and is projected to be one of their starting wide receivers. But, again, this guy led the SWAC in receiving uh, pretty impressive, and he's really their third receiver behind a guy named Smith and a guy named Murchison. Murchison missed all of last year but had a really nice 2022. Smith was the leading receiver last year. So this year at their wide receiving core, last year's leading receiver's back. 2022's leading receiver is, is, is back, and the, the SWAC's leading receiver last year is back. So that's a solid wide receiver core, which will be a good test. For Alabama's defensive backs, of course, the quarterbacks, T.J. Finley, weirdly making his third start against Alabama uh, for his third different team. I'm <laughs> sure that's a first. Team. And I'm sure that's a first. But let's remember this. I, I hate remembering this because what I prefer is just to remember the very last play of the game. But T.J. Finley came within a whisker of beating Alabama in 2021 when he was the quarterback at Auburn and the famous Bryce Young overtime game when Bryce Young helped Alabama pull it out of the fire at Jordan-Hare at the end. Well, that was T.J. Finley that was the starting quarterback. Didn't have a great game, uh, didn't put up good numbers, but was almost the winning quarterback before Bryce pulled it out. But T.J. Finley obviously had signed with two different SEC schools. I think he started a total of 11 SEC games. 
but last year became the single season passing leader in Texas State history, uh, Texas State University history. Uh, so that's pretty notable. But their best three players, Luke, uh, all guys that I think will get NFL looks, not not day one picks, not even day two picks, but I think they have three potential NFL players. Jose Weaver's probably their best player. He's a defensive lineman, uh, 6'3", 300. They also have a 6'3", 300-pound offensive guard named Quantavius Leslie. But, uh, he, he, he's on the uh, Outland watch list and uh, was, has been an all-conference player. He's a senior, solid guard on offense. That's going to be a bit of a challenge for our defensive line, and Upton Stout, cool name, DB, uh, that's on the Thorpe Award watch list, uh, five career interceptions, had four interceptions during his freshman season. That's pretty impressive. Upton Stout, kind of their nickelback. So he's going to be on our slot receiver, usually Kobe Prentice, might be Cole Adams. And again, I'm not bringing all this up because I think Western Kentucky is some great team. I, I'm, I'm going to, spoiler alert, I'm going to pick Alabama to win and cover, actually. I'm going to do that later this week. <laughs> but uh, Upton Stout uh, and those guys, Hosea Weaver, um, Quantavius Leslie, even TJ Finley, though that wide receiver core, we want our guys challenged. That's a good thing that at individual spots, they're SEC good at individual spots. And uh, that's why it's going to be a challenge for some of our guys at times. And, uh, and that's what we need because we need to get ready for South Florida. And then we need to get ready for Wisconsin, Georgia. You know, Auburn's playing, not taking a shot at them, but Auburn's playing Alabama A&M this week. I mean, how much are they going to learn, you know, about their team? Alabama's going to learn more, more. Okay. Number, two things. Number one, Upton Stout sounds like something Danny Cannell drank after the Florida State game. Uh, <laughs> number two. I thought it sounded like I, a law firm. Yeah. I'm with you that um, I'm, with you on the, you know, we're going to learn more, but I, and I'm not trying to, I mean, I think people in the comments have been thinking I've been defending Auburn too much lately and I got to get off of that. That's not, yeah, I know. That's not really my bag. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to say this, that I get why Auburn is playing Alabama a and I think this makes a lot more sense for them. Auburn doesn't, Auburn doesn't need to learn. They need a win. You know, yeah. Auburn's on a three-game losing streak now. I mean, they've had three two straight. Of their last three, two of their last three, they played really bad. They lost to Mexico State and, and played Maryland. terrible in the bowl game against Maryland. And in between, obviously, played Alabama nearly off our feet, uh, which is just kind of mind-blowing when you think about the game no, before and the not. game after. Well, and it I, is in that sense. Now, we're used to it, Alabama-Auburn, yeah. when especially games over there uh, – Nationally, kind of people weird. aren't used to it, but we should be used to it. This is a – Jim, and again, I don't mean it as a shot at them. They, they want to beat Alabama badly, like often. And I feel like most Alabama fans overlook them. Me personally, I don't. And Auburn fans think I'm always, you know – like taking a shot at them like they take the game more seriously. I take it as seriously as y'all. I just don't get to coach. That's frustrating because, like, they want to beat Alabama badly, so bad that they play great, and, and they all, and, and they either do or almost do. Yeah. And, like, in high school, I wanted to, like, meet Pamela Anderson badly. Didn't come close. Just wanting it badly apparently wasn't enough. I know. you. Gotta, it's different down there, Jimmy. I should have. Should have sent her like a letter and met her at Jordan Hare. <laughs> Did you wanting ever try it, bad, rolling wanting it badly? Wanting it badly works out over there. You should have tried rolling her yard. That seems to work. That <laughs> gets her attention. <laughs> All right. What did I think oh, God. Rolling her. Yeah, I get it. It's so stupid on here. So <laughs> I, I get it. I do, in fact, have an overlay for Ultimate College Football HC. OK, hey, Locked on Bama fans, I want to take a moment to give you a heads up on a brand new mobile game that I think you're going to love as much as I do. That's Ultimate College Football HC. From recruiting players and hiring coaching staffs to overseeing training camps and handling school scholarships, you control every crucial detail of your program. And it's probably going to be Alabama or it could be Western Kentucky. And you could really just run that program into the ground before they play Alabama. I'd love that. It's all in your hands. Will you be able to handle the pressure? I don't know. We'll have to see. Get on there and see. 
And here's what I really love about the game. You're responsible for calling offensive plays during the game. Your strategy will not only determine the success of your football season, but it will shape the future and the legacy of your program. Ultimate Football HC is completely free, yo. Has no ads and 100% playable offline. You can play on the go as you want to and when you want to. And, of course, we have a special offer for Locked On Bama fans. Use the promo code Locked On CFB, all caps, inside the game store and receive a free boost to your program. Make sure to take advantage of this perk as it will get your team off to a strong start. To download the game, just visit ultimate-cfb.com, ultimate-cfb.com, or look it up on the App Store and go get it. Ultimate College Football HC, begin your coaching legacy. Today. Want to remind everybody too uh, to check out the college football previews. Uh, these are going on right now. Your boy Jimmy Stein was involved in one of them. And uh, just check them out on Locked On College Football. And it's, it's time now. It's time to get your previews all in because the real thing's getting started. Of course, all this is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's Locked On College Football. And my main man, Spence, who does a great job with him. Uh, Jimmy and I have both been on that program before, and he's a good dude. And, man, he's killing it in terms of views. So go check him out, Locked On College Football. All right, Jimmy, some visits. Um, you know, there's going to be some visits this weekend for sure for Alabama. Now, uh, I don't know. Yes, and they're all big. Don't get me wrong. Um at the same time, I think the one visit everybody's talking about is Justice Terry coming back to Alabama, apparently for the Georgia game. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I think Alabama leads for him or that I no. think Alabama really even has like a 40% chance or anything like that. But if we can get him on campus, and let's assume Alabama's undefeated, and let's assume that, you know, that place is rocking at 630 at night, we can make a we can make a move for Justice Terry, I believe. Now, in the end, you can make a move as long as your NIL is right. I think a clue is just the game that he picked to come to, because that's he might just want to see George play. That's true again. Uh, he's probably Georgia, but hey, I don't rule out Alabama. You know, you get him on camp like look, you get him on campus multiple times. It can happen. Justice Terry says all the right things. I'm sure Alabama's in the running. I would still say Georgia's the favorite. I think a lot of prospects out there are gonna accept the Alabama offer of tickets to the Alabama Georgia game. It's uh, maybe the biggest game of the college football season, certainly way up there. I mean, there's going to be game day. I read, I read just yesterday, Lauren Elena, national country recording artist is going to play just outside the stadium before kickoff. That's, that's different. I mean, in terms of having a national act uh, play before the game. Uh, and so that, that's cool. But just as Terry visiting also, I'm, 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 I like this visit that's this weekend. How about this? Xavier Kroll from Jackson, Alabama, is coming this weekend to the Western Kentucky game. That and dude's a dude. He mud holed. Now, it didn't win the game, but just, but Xavier Kroll had a giant game against Sarah Land. And keep in mind what that means. I mean, Sarah Land's defense, Sarah Land is one of these programs. Look, there's a handful of them around the state. There's a handful that you can say, if you start there, you're going to play college football somewhere. Now, it might be NAIA or Division Three or whatever, but everyone that starts at Sarah Land is a college football player. And this dude had like, I don't know what the numbers were, something like 200 yards on 20 carries. It is outrageous numbers. Then throw in the fact, loop that Jackson's a, like a 4A school playing 6A Spanish Fort, you know, or 5A school playing 6A I mean, Sarah Land. So they're a smaller school, shouldn't be as good up front. Kroll still had that, that massive game against Sarah Land. He's just a sophomore. This is definitely one of the nation's top backs in the 27 class. And it's good that he's going to visit even during a Western Kentucky game. Uh, of course, Tuscaloosa is pretty good, pretty easy drive from Jackson, Alabama, just, you know, probably two hours or so. Uh, but anyway, uh, that'll be a big deal. Uh, I'm, I'm really hoping he's part of the 27 class. He's special. And mentioned in the 27 class, uh, Alabama's got Jabarius Guerrero and Barack Willis also coming in. They're both already committed. They're 2027 20, guys. Now, from this particular class, uh, London Simmons, Luke Metz, Mika DeBose, and Daryl Johnson. Uh, DeBose has been the subject of a little controversy here, right? At least recently. Tavian St. Clair, who's the quarterback committed to Ohio State, has been making 
overtures that, hey, look, we're trying to flip him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not particularly worried. What do you think, Jimmy? Well, Ohio State's always been a threat with Debos because his mother, uh, you know, I think he was born up there and his mother is from Ohio and she's an Ohio State fan. Uh, so, you know, from, from growing up in Ohio, she, she's not from Mobile and, and going, oh, you know, I think I like Ohio State. I mean, she, she was born and raised there, kind of grew up an Ohio State fan. So I think they're a legitimate threat to flip. As we know, they've been very aggressive NIL-wise in this class. Uh, but I have no no – off, you know, I have no reason to believe he's he's going to flip. I don't have any information that that's something that's that, that could happen. But hey, in this day and age, you, every kid that's committed to you is one DM away from decommitting. If you know what I mean. I mean, any DM could have the offer they've been waiting for. And we all know what that means. Now we we used, we used to have to whisper or hush about it. Now it's just out in the open. Uh, you know, every every kid is uh is subject to to getting some dollar figure they can't refuse. So you you can't be confident a hundred percent with any of them. You got to keep recruiting them like they're unrecruited and, and just do the best you can NIL wise uh, with all of them. But you know, uh, Debo's uh, understand had a brief conversation with his coach at Theodore. Uh, he's doing really well, really good player uh, playing tackle at Theodore, but, uh, but very likely to be a guard uh, at Alabama. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited about him. For sure. Another 27 kid down here, and by down here, I mean in the Mobile area, the people are raving about quarterback Gunnar Rivers, son of Philip Rivers, quarterback yeah. at St. Michael's. He had a big game. And, and how about this week? St. Michael's, a smaller private school. Off the top of my head, they're 4A or 5A. They're playing 7A Fairhope uh, this, this right. week. 7A, even though they're like a 4A, 5A school. And and I talked to a couple of people at the Fairhope game last week, and I'm like, oh, Fairhope 7 eight, they're going to crush them. And people are, no, no, Gunner Rivers is a real equalizer. He's an equalizer. Yeah, Gunner Rivers uh, has been ranked higher than Trent Seaborn. And, you know, I've just raved, waxed poetic about Trent Seaborn. And he, I think he is awesome. But, you know, you it, you do wonder. Trent Seaborn got so good so fast. Yeah. You wonder how much better he can get. I'm I'm – I would take if Trent Seaborn committed to Alabama right now, I'd dance a jig. Yeah, but I, if Gunnar Rivers I'll committed to Alabama, I would also dance. Yeah, Gunner, I mean, throw it, I mean, Philip Rivers' son, so that's going to get a lot of attention, period. But Gunner versus Trent, I mean, you know, Gunner's ranked higher, but I think a lot of that just starts with bigger, stronger. You know, this is a, a big kid that some say is going to grow to be as big as his dad, who's obviously a pretty big, pretty big dude to be playing quarterback. So, uh, uh, anyway, Gunner Gunner is definitely uh, creating some uh, some noise in the recruiting and, space, and his name is Gunner. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's, that's just good. good. Um, yeah, one more. But if you're a quarterback more, or covering punts, that's good. Yeah, one more uh, guy I wanted you to talk about uh, now: Xavier Sab and Amari Sab, who are the brothers of uh, Keon Sab. They will be coming in. One of them a little more highly rated than the other, but uh, you know, I think. Alabama sort of like, hey, let's get in on this Sab family thing. Yeah. Um, Take all the Sabs you can get. Yeah. Uh, and Tavius Richardson is coming in from Greenville. Um, uh, the safety. The safety. Now, he is he's from Greenville, Georgia, by the way. He's committed to USF. And, yes, I, I think it's very clear that Alabama has missed on a few safety prospects, and so they may be, like, doing some reevaluation. This guy's apparently very, very fast. I'm not going to try and sell anybody that this is Alabama's first choice at safety. I am going to say I don't think this is a desperation move either. And a lot of good players out there. And there's a lot of good players. There's not just the players we know. There's a lot of good players. And I don't know the whole story here, but, you know, there's a, there's a handful of kids that I do. What I do know is there's a handful of kids that Alabama sees over the course of the summer or the spring and the evaluation period, and they tell them, we like you a lot. We just want to see you play games this fall. We want to see more this fall. I mean, it, there's no better evaluation piece than senior year tape, right? Because that's what you're getting. You're not getting them off their sophomore year or their junior year. You're getting them after their senior year, right? Uh, Georgia's already played two games over there, and their high school season starts before Alabama's. So there's two game tapes now out with this kid, and now Alabama's ratchet up the pressure. Like Luke said, we're not going to sit here and tell you guys this was a first choice. What we are telling you guys is UCF's in the Big 12. 
I've been impressed with their evals on some other kids that they've ended up getting. They're recruiting better than you think. Is USF, uh, right? You you CF. Wait a minute. I, I thought it was Central Florida. No, it's it's South Florida. It's South. He's committed to South Florida. Yeah. Well, well never mind that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about South Florida's recruiting. I thought it was UCF. I probably should have just let you go. I know. I know. I should have just kept on my. I really thought. So, does he have a Central Florida offer? Maybe that's what I saw. Uh, but no, anyway. he's got a Mississippi State offer. Well, that's pretty now cool. apparently USC has offered him recently. Like some people are coming on late, and mm -hmm. so his 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 profile may not be completely up. Yeah, I mean, we just just like the rest of you guys. I found out about this guy yesterday because this yeah. isn't a, a, a name that's been out there. But I did see he ran a ten six hundred meters. Now that I saw ten six hundred yeah. meters, that's a. Really but he did it at UCF's time. camp, so did it really happen? <laughs> uh, all right, that's going to do it for today's podcast. We'll be. Tomorrow with more. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.